What's up guys, my name is Ilya Belov and if you've seen my channel before you probably know how much I, you know, I share all my successes with you guys and you know all the things that I've done in my life but I just wanted to take a moment you know, to put this YouTube video a little bit more personal in my life and kind of how I got there, my whole entrepreneur journey as a whole because you know guys a lot of these gurus and all these people on the internet you see all these people succeed and I was in the same exact position as well you see all these people succeed and you're like how, how they achieve success so quickly what are they doing what am I doing wrong how come I can't make the same amount of money that, that they do and you don't really understand what's kind of going on your, with, with your life and how you can do this and how you can do that and I'm not saying I've had it the hardest and I'm, I'm blessed enough that I even have the opportunity to grow up in America but that kind of brings me to my first point um, my parents moved here from Israel. I was born in Israel in uh, Nazareth Elite. So uh, Ilya of Nazareth, is, that's, that would be my name. But they moved here and they're first generation immigrants, guys, and they don't speak any English. And I I'm feel very, very blessed that they've given everything to me for, you know, just, just my whole world, the whole opportunities that I have, everything. Um, so that's kind of how it started, guys. Um, Russian was my first language, and you know it sounds kind of funny that an Israeli is not speaking Hebrew but Russian. But I'm I'm half Russian, half Ukrainian, and if you guys know what's going on in Ukraine, uh, that's where the remainder of my family is. But the whole thing started, guys. You know, I was always like having fun with my friends and all that. But right when I got around like 13 or 14, uh, I started having like this. I don't know, epiphany or whatever. But I saw my dad every single day just working the night shift. I was always like. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not alone, but I'd sit at home by myself after my sister went off to college from like 4 to 9 p.m. until my mom would come home. And, you know, I barely really saw my parents. I always had a lot of free time alone. Um, sure enough, I had friends and all that. And, you know, I was hanging out with people all that time. But some days, guys, I would literally just sit on the computer and, you know, young enough, like maybe you guys are doing the same thing right now, no matter what age you are, always looking for opportunities to, you know, make money, guys. And everyone wants to figure out how they can, you know, not have that job because seeing my father and seeing all the things he did for me and my mother, same thing, all of them working like 50, 60, 70 hours a week, um, working until three in the morning, starting at 3 p.m. made me not want to have, you know, that option. I just didn't want to do that. I wanted to be able to, you know, make enough money that I could tell my parents and tell my family um, that, hey, I can support you guys. And I know it's a different mentality than a lot of people have and maybe you have the same exact mentality I don't know I can't tell anyone else's story except my own but the whole thing started guys um, I was like 14 years old and like I had this idea where I could sell um, these bracelets for for breast cancer survivors since um, a close a close one of my buddies moms uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer I was like maybe hey how can I help so that kind of just really pushed out that entrepreneur uh, journey and this was before like all the the Wix um, all the all the really easy website creations. So I decided to learn HTML with the help of my neighbor. If you're seeing this video, I thank you so much for you know kind of jump starting my entrepreneur journey. And like from that point on, I was just always on the computer, guys. And sure enough, guys, like I would go hang on my friends and all, but sometimes I would just want to go home and literally just work on like this this thing that was just blowing my mind, just like online selling products, e-commerce as a whole. And sure enough, guys, this was all for uh, non-profit and you know, I was donating all the profits I made but it like blew my mind that I could be 14 years old and be making like two thousand dollars a month and and donating it all and uh, even my family was like wow like what are you like what are you doing maybe you should do something for profit and that kind of kept me rolling and kept me going and I was like man what can I do what type of niche can I exploit and uh, it's really funny why my parents have always been so supportive and like guys it's like so important let me just take a pause to have people who support you if people are constantly belittling you and you know you need a good mix of the two but if people are constantly telling you you can't do it you can't do it you can't do it you're gonna feel like you can't do it and I know there's probably people out there that are strong enough to have people telling them you can't do it you've heard these stories before that people are saying oh you can't do it you can't do this and they go ahead and do it and that's an awesome feeling and I like, personally I think the best is a mix of people who are supporting you number one but also people who are you know crapping on you saying that you can't do it because then you can just prove them wrong but I decided to exploit a niche and this is not this wasn't like Shopify and I wasn't even doing Shopify I decided to sign up for Big Cartel because it was like ten dollars cheaper per month and it was cheaper for like the, 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 the software service so then I used like Big Cartel and like optimized the site 
uh, did some like e-commerce and then I started running like ads and this is like when I was like 16 years old and the funniest thing is if you guys look it up it's probably still up there uh, it's called Dank Hat Co and they were like marijuana hats so it's literally just a hat with a pot leaf on it and I was selling them online and on eBay so like I was kind of kept it going kept it going but you know that was all like you know fun and games like I was making like a thousand some months two thousand some months like three some month, like one month I remember I made like 4,500 bucks and like oh, it was so awesome the profits weren't really big but you know it was just great to be like making those moves and you know people even at school guys because like I was always you know I'm not even gonna say like a foreigner because you know I speak pretty good English but people would always be like you know the Russian kid or whatever because I'd play like I play sports and stuff but you know sometimes people especially like where you grow up I grew up in Cali but then I moved to Texas in the middle of seventh grade in April and you kind of feel like an outsider especially if you come to the school year halfway through um, so I always had to like you know stand my ground and act like a thug even though you know you kind of just want to be accepted but people would make fun of like my mom's accent or some and I'd always get into like stuff and fights of that stuff but beside the point people started talking like really good about me they started seeing my stuff they started thinking it was cool people at like high schools would like wear my stuff like wear these weed hats you know just like piss off people and I remember guys I kept on wearing those up until I was like 18 I don't even like smoke you know I don't even do any of that crap it was just kind of funny that like how people really really want to push that image so I was just pushing this lifestyle and people were buying into the lifestyle and that's kind of like what I do now just trying to push my personal brand you kind of bring that lifestyle perspective behind a brand and it will be successful but again all this stuff isn't like big success it's nothing like live off of but I still I'm still proud of the things that I did when I was younger guys it's like anything you do no matter if you make a dollar if you're proud of your creation and you're proud of your design and you worked all night you should be proud of that guys no matter what anyone tells you but fast forward like another year and I'm 17 and I start looking into other opportunities at this point I have like a little bit of a nest egg and you know I wouldn't spend any money is like the funny thing I did buy a car for like two grand when I was uh, 15 which was cool because I had a car but I couldn't drive and, you know, I was just like awesome and I was always trying to make money on everything guys I always have like so many different things lined up and so many different hobbies and so many of this and my parents like if you could ever talk to them or ask them they'd be like I would like try to learn how to play guitar and I'll try to learn how to play like the ukulele and I'll try to do this and I'll try to do that. I'll try to box, I'll try to do this, I'll try to do everything. And like that is not what you want to do in business. I think the number one thing I can tell you is don't spread yourself too thin. Get something up and running first, get it going, no matter how small it is. And then once that's running and you can get like not even employees, but you can get it kind of good, then move on to the next things and keep on moving. Just like you're in a career you want to keep it coming and you want to make sure that that career is going to stick before you decide to start looking for another job and then you know you get fired or you know it's a, it's a basic point but back to the point so i met a guy called uh, his name's ken he's an older gentleman and my parents at this point have lost their jobs and we moved to um california and this is like three years down the line and they bought a little small business and the guy who came in there he'd always like ship out his stuff he saw and my dad would always talk about me my dad was always like really, really proud of me he was like my number one like best friend you know what i mean my fan he would always support me whatever i wanted to do he would always be behind me a hundred percent and you know i mean i'm very thankful for that and the only reason i have this is because of the opportunity but this mentor came to me guys and he was selling on ebay he was selling auto parts so he gave me a bunch of wholesale auto parts and he was like okay you should try to sell these and the margins were like 10 or 20 percent and i know like sure enough i wasn't sitting on youtube and i mean i was just trying to learn from as large of a network of, of people as possible just asking people for help never be afraid to ask people for help because you'd be surprised that people are always willing to help especially if you're young if you're a young entrepreneur watching this congrats like keep on going because people are going to be willing to help you guys. Um, but we started doing that. We kept on talking. I made like $500,000 in like three weeks. And I was like, so like, is there more? Is this like literally all there is to do? And I was like, why don't we just do the same thing? Because it was a distributor selling parts. So they would manufacture them in China. And then they would sell them to people in America to sell them on eBay, which is like a middleman. And I was like, well, after we just go straight to China. And he was an older gentleman. And he's always done everything by the book, like distributors, keep it safe, keep American business. And he was like 60 years old at the time. He was like, okay, maybe we should, let's try it. So we moved, we did everything through Alibaba, through China, like literally got a scout, like did it super old school guys. Went to a trade expo in Las Vegas to meet this person. 
um, and made a relationship. And that's what I did. Like, that's how I made my first, like, big amount of money beside the liquidations. I'm not even going to bring that up. It's just like reselling stuff. But we created a brand and we were splitting everything. I would do stuff on my eBay store. He would do stuff on his eBay store. And everything was, like, going well, guys. Like, before I was 18, literally, at this point I was whipping an M3. I was, like, buying whatever I wanted. And, like, guys, it was awesome. Like, it's so great to finally achieve that success. And sure enough, guys, you may be in the comments saying, oh, yo, but you were 18. You never had to struggle. You never had to go through that corporate grind. And sure enough, guys, like, I would do yard work. And I never had, like, a job at a freaking um, at a McDonald's or anything like that. But I still understood and I'm not gonna say understand, but I saw what it meant to have to work to support your family. Like I didn't have a family. I was blessed enough. And if you don't have a family, you don't have many responsibilities. The best time to become an entrepreneur is when you're in that position. Because once you have a family and responsibilities, you can't do that. But we keep on fast forwarding, guys. I was doing auto parts and everything was going good. And then economies of scale come into play and supply and demand come into play. And everyone starts jumping in the same market. So profit margins started going to shite. And I still sell some of them on eBay. Um, you know, once the business scaled up to around $50,000 a month, uh, we had to get like three employees and it kind of scaled up and everything was going good. And then profits started getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So again, guys, being an entrepreneur is not about like being stuck on one thing, but once, once something come, like is rolling or whatever, you got to keep on looking for other opportunities. You can't just have one stream of income as an entrepreneur because you will, if one, that one stream of income fails, you will fail and it will be over, like your whole thing. You Either you have savings or you get a job or I, I don't know, like you tell me, like you can tell me exactly what happens. But at this point, guys, I decide to get into like a highly lucrative industry and I think it's so like ridiculous that my parents have supported me from like selling like marijuana merchandise, cannabis. I mean, I think they should legalize it. That's cool for another video. But... I told them that I was like, yo, let's like, will you support me if I do this? And it was sex toys. And sure enough, guys, I come from a pretty like, I'm Jewish and I come from like a pretty Eastern Orthodox family. Like my mom's Eastern Orthodox. My dad's Jewish. I was born in Israel. So it's like pretty conservative, but they were like on board. They were like, all you're doing is supplying someone else's needs that need to be met if the market is there why not take advantage of it i mean people love sex toys sex always sells and you guys have seen my other videos like that's one of my main products i sell is literally like a whole plethora of sex toys so i started on ebay and at that point guys i literally jumped on to amazon fba started researching that because when we were doing the auto parts i was like maybe we're talking about amazon fba so at that point it was such like a naive concept that like you can make money and everyone could you know amazon would fulfill your orders for you it blew my mind. Um, so I started getting into that, learning whatever I could, making so many mistakes. Because once you know the eBay game, you think you may know the Amazon game, the whole e-commerce sphere, you don't know jack crap. It's completely different. Sure enough, we had a brand. And on Amazon, to succeed, you need to have a brand, like a, a, a person, not a personal brand, but a private labeling brand. And, and I just, I just kept, on, kept on going. And, and this is where I am today. Um, I mean, again, I don't mean to brag. I don't mean to put anyone down and say, I've struggled more than you have. I've, I have not. Um, plenty of people are watching this video. have definitely struggled more than I have. But I just want to tell you guys that it is possible. And at least for me, it was I had to spend a lot more money to start the whole process than I should have. And now what I know what I know, I can literally launch a new product for literally like 1200 bucks and scale it up to $10,000 a month. And that's the position I am now. Um, I can make passive income. I still have the eBay business that makes uh, less money than Amazon, but I'm scaling up Amazon, guys. I'm living my dreams. And again, I'm always diversifying my income. I've got my Amazon business, and then I have three brick and mortar businesses, and I'm planning on opening up another one. But now I have the opportunity and the way to actually build my empire. And guys, it's never like too late to start like the thing is with the Amazon thing like within the year I was already making a lot of money and that's awesome but the thing is like even some of my students who I, I mentor make literally a crap ton of money that they would have never made at their job literally within, within three months and it blows my mind that I'm blessed enough to share that knowledge with you guys 
and you know through the form of this YouTube video, through the form of mentorship. And if you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button down below. It's a shallow plug, I know, but it's 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 great that you can have the opportunity to absorb all this knowledge, and it's free on the internet, and you can actually connect with you know people that you couldn't connect with before. I didn't even know about the the YouTube sphere of entrepreneurs or trying to find mentorship for help. And sure enough, guys, a lot of people are in it, like, you know, for the money, helping out people. But the thing is, guys, is like, I just wish, and I'm blessed enough, um, Ken, my partner, just died recently, like about, a, I'd say like two months ago. And I'm blessed enough that he came to me and I've stumbled upon so many things. And if there's like one piece of advice I can, I can give is number one, don't spread yourself too thin. But number two, do not deny an opportunity if it's knocking at your door if something has fallen in your lap it literally your life can change in like two months three months and it can drastically change in a year you could be in like a place you don't even know i have no idea well i have a general idea because i've set myself up in stability but if you start from the, the bottom or you start from a different position or you're stuck in a nine to five job your life can change and all you have to do is literally take that first step but guys, I hope you enjoyed my story. Um, I hope I can give you some type of inspiration. Check out all my other videos for some more content. Just want to give you guys more of a personal look into my life. And if you have any questions, comment down below. Uh, anything else, um, that's about it, guys. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. I'm signing off.